Grandpa, are you happy? And now this woman seems to be in a deep supernatural conversation with her deceased grandfather. Yes. That's good. Grandpa is happy. Are you starting to believe? Or do you need more proof? I think you should ask him a question. Something that only he would know. We assure you, these volunteers have no prior knowledge of this experiment. Grandpa, what's your favorite musical? Phantom, Phantom no. of the Opera. Phantom P. Oh, I would always play that on the piano for him. Could just the letter P really mean the spirits are spelling out Phantom of the Opera? So now how do you feel? I don't know, it almost makes me want to cry. I'm, I'm happy Aww. that he's happy. I'm a believer. More now More than before? now, yeah. I doubted a little bit at the beginning, but mm. after doing it and experiencing it, like, I, there's no way I can doubt it now, I think. At this point, we could easily let these people leave convinced they contacted the spirit world. No way you can doubt it. I don't think so, no. But for our final test, we're going to have the group reach out again, only this time with a little twist. What I have here are some blindfolds. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> okay. Surely blindfolding our participants won't make a difference to the spirits. Okay. Thank you. Or will it? I'm going to place the planchette in the center of the table. Now is going to be the moment of truth. Spirits, can you speak to us? Are you there? Right there? Kendall's grandpa, show us that you're with us again. That's odd. Are the spirits drawing a blank? You know what year he died? Yes. Okay. What year did you die? Right there? Okay. Here's the second number. How do you think our new believers will react when they find out the spirits are having some technical difficulties? The third, one more, one more number. Okay. You can take your blindfolds off. Now, what year did he pass away? 2010. So this should be conclusive evidence at this point. Now, the spirits did a fantastic job without the blindfolds, but with the blindfolds on, this is what I got when you went for the date from Grandpa, who was so clear before, right? Here's what you got. You got a J and a K, and you got three blanks that were on the middle of the wood. There was no, no numbers here, here, or here. She looks like she just saw a ghost. So what's going on here? Before, the spirits were answering their questions perfectly. Oh. <laughs> Did they suddenly forget how to spell? And if everyone swears they aren't in control, I'm over yet. then who or what is moving the dial? Here's a hint. It's got nothing to do with what's hiding in the darkness and everything to do with what's hidden in your brain. Here to explain is neuroscientist Jim Cohn. When you mess with something like a Ouija board, you experience a very common behavior called the idiomotor effect, caused in part by the left parietal lobe of your brain. This effect causes your brain to signal the muscles in your hands to move without you even realizing it. This is what caused our participants to spell out a message they could all understand. So she died in a car she accident. She did die in a car accident, yeah. It's just one example of the many ways we can be fooled by our own senses. But when we added blindfolds, we made it impossible for our volunteers' subconscious minds to see where to move the dial. So all they got was nonsense. <laughs> Will our new believers buy into the science behind the seance? There are no spirits Yes, there involved. are. That was right. No, yeah. no. But I definitely felt strong movement on the board. What do you think? <laughs> I do also kind of want to believe that you know, my grandfather was talking to me. However, whether it's true or not, I really don't know. This is what's known as the confirmation bias. Once you establish a certain belief, you tend to favor evidence that confirms that belief. Oh my gosh, Phantom, Phantom oh. of the Opera. Phantom. In this case, when that belief also provides a comforting conclusion to an emotionally charged experience,